exactly 100 years ago today, at the 11th hour of the 11th day on the 11th month, World War I came to a close. After four years, five campaigning seasons, 32 countries involved, and 15 to 19 million dead, depending on where you look. Unlike many wars in modern history that tend to wind down as the end is near, fighting continued up until the last moments in places such as the Muzargan, the largest and first independent offensive for American forces in the war that would begin in late September and last until the armistice. It is within this battle that two of the most remembered events of the American experience of World War I took place, the first being the heroics of Sergeant Alvin York, who charged a German machine gun nest, killing over 20 and capturing over 100, winning the Medal of Honor. The second being the events surrounding the Lost Battalion under command of Major Charles Whittlesey, who held out, cut off from friendly forces against all odds and requests by the Germans for surrender. These two stories are among thousands of similar accounts of bravery that can be seen from men of all countries involved as they pushed against each other in this gigantic conflict. And as typically happens after a war, when they came home, they were asked about what happened, why they fought, what the war was about, and what they thought about it. For many, these questions were difficult to answer. Many found themselves pushed into the typified Lost Generation description of the All Quiet on the Western Front and Farewell to Arms narrative. Experiences and takeaways from World War I, however, as you would expect from such a diverse war, were incredibly varied. Many did feel that it was a waste of time and the death of a generation, but others felt a sense of patriotism and pride, and many more had extremely unresolved feelings. York, upon returning home, was offered book, movie, and advertising deals worth a fortune that he turned down out of a feeling that it wouldn't be right. But later, during World War II, participated in many drives and campaigns for the war effort, eventually passing in the 60s. Whittlesey had an even tougher time adjusting, spending his post-war years trying to help his former soldiers cope while being constantly invited to ceremonies that eventually weighed down on him, to the point that he threw himself off a ship on the way to Havana, disappearing in 1921. Other soldiers from the Lost Battalion described an inability to talk about the war, citing that people would often not listen or ask the wrong questions, many of these sentiments being described in Edward Lengel's book To Conquer Hell. And this aspect doesn't even begin to get into the broader unanswered questions about World War I, such as why did it start? Who was at fault? What are the impacts and what does it mean? That will probably continue to be debated over forever in this war with few perpetrators and many victims, of which both can be found on either side. Unfortunately, most of these questions, especially to do with the troops, may never be answered. Upon the 100-year anniversary of the armistice today, every single person, from politician to soldier to civilian, who had an intimate or small experience with this monumental event is gone. And we have only what they left behind to understand what it was like and to process the war. Now, there are also a lot of many less personal sources of documents and speeches, a lot of which have been compiled into fantastic books that do paint an incredible picture of what the war was like, so I'm not saying that we're blind to the nature of the time period or the sentiments within, but given some of the statements of the men post-war of an inability to speak and an unwillingness of people to understand, I can't help but feel that some things might have been missed. And for this generation, our chance to ask any more has slipped away. However, they were obviously not the last generation to experience conflict, as it would not end up being the war to end all wars. We are currently living in the waning years of the generation that fought World War II, and before we know it, they will all unfortunately be gone as well. And their stories, just as those who lived through World War I, need to be told why we still have a chance, along with people from all conflicts, on all sides, because the repeating theme of all wars is that they should be avoided in the future. But the human nature to perpetuate it has never heeded that warning, and it could one day lead to our complete downfall. And it may be that talking to those who lived it, and know what the cost is, and really listening to what they have to share, and making sure to preserve those experiences, will keep us from having more wars lost to time. That we might be able to continue to pass down the knowledge to younger generations, so that they can really appreciate our current peace, and keep it as much as possible as they grow up and become the next leaders of this world. So if you have access to any of these stories, please get them. They're vital. Both to understand the time period, whatever it may be, and the sacrifice involved. And thank them. In the pinned comment below, I have the stories of my two grandparents that fought in World War II, and I encourage you to share your families or your own if you've served, so that we together may take pause at the centennial of World War I to remember those who served there, and those who have served since, to not let these crucial periods in history be lost. 